I'm as guilty as sin. I don't deny that. But, damn it, you've got to review the facts. The whole story. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for both the little mutts and I'm sorry for the kid and I, I'm sorry for the family. But I'm eight years old now. I've got another five good years in me. It's a waste for me to die now. A waste. I'm at my peak. I'm stronger than I've ever been. I'm at my most intelligent, my most canny. You want a dog to protect his ass? I'm your dog. I could tear a man apart. And if the wrong man comes to this house, I will. I'm useful, damn it. So I uh, fucked up a little. Doesn't everybody? Look, this is what happened. For a start, this fence they put up was just beaming with curiosity value. I mean, don't you humans understand us at all? If you're gonna put up a fence between dogs, put up a chain link fence or a, a wire mesh fence. Don't go putting up this heavy wooden stuff because then we can't see each other. And if we can't see each other, then we're just gonna have to try and get through the fence, obviously. So that's the beginning of the story. Everything's hunky-dory. And suddenly, up goes this big new hardwood fence. New neighbours have moved in, it seems. And they have some dogs. I don't get a chance to see what kind they are. All I know is one morning, suddenly, these voices barking right on the other side of that fence. So I go bark my side. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Well, we bark and we bark and it's, it's instantly aggressive because if we can't see each other, then we've just got to assert ourselves vocally, don't we? I mean, now that I see what those little mutts were, I see how stupid, how wasteful the whole episode was. But because they can't see me, they figure they can prove something by barking loudly. Well, the barking get all morning. Then we break for lunch. Then we start again in the afternoon. Finally, their master comes home and takes them inside. A little piece. But by now, I was pretty shitty. I can't help it. I'm a Rottweiler. It's how you people bring me, for Christ's sake. After dinner, I'm just having a little quiet time. When it starts up again. So I bark. That's when my master comes out and tells me to be quiet. So obedient and respectful I am, I have to remain quiet while as arrogant newcomers go on barking into the night, barking at me, saying, giving up, have you? Ha! You can imagine I did not sleep well that night. The next day, the barking starts as soon as my master goes to work. So I bark. Ruff, ruff, ruff. And I start to dig, yeah. I dig away at the earth under that fence. And those dumb little dipshits, I can hear them digging too. This day, we don't break for lunch. We bark all day. Ruff, ruff, arr, ruff, ruff, ruff. My throat is chafed. My paws are bloody from digging. And as soon as their master takes them inside, I furiously ram into that fence. It gives a little. After dinner, they come out again and start to bark. I try, I try hard, let me assure you, to forget the whole thing. The three minutes of their inane diatribe, and I'm back at that fence turkey barking too. And the next thing, we're all digging again. <laughs> Ten o'clock, and my master comes out and yells at me to be quiet. Those fuckwits have caused me to lose face. I'm eight years old, and my master yelled at me like I was a pup. 
the shame. I'll go to bed, but I can't sleep. I'm seeing red right in front of my eyes. It's blind fury, and I start to grind my teeth. They bark until 11, and that brings us to yesterday. I had only managed to catch the barest hint of sleep when their barking wakes me up. Christ! It's seven in the morning. I think, right, I'll show them a thing or two. And I run to that fence and I start to dig and bark and dig and bark and bark and dig. And that's when my master screams at me from inside the house. Don't you see? I was being driven to disobedience. I was losing control and it wasn't my fault. It was the damn fence and their bloody barking. <laughs> After dinner, they come out again and start to bark. I try, I try hard, they're laughing at me. And that thing starts to give a little more. And I bark, and I dig, and I dig, and they bark, and they bark, and they dig, and I dig, and I dig, and I bark, and I bark, and they dig, and they dig, and I bark, and finally, fuck you! And I hurl myself at that thing. And it just falls, and I'm just staring at them, and they just shit themselves. They've been wanting this all the while, and now they've got it to me, and the side of them, terrified of my size and brawn and killer teeth, satisfies me, but not enough. No, so I just grab one of them by the neck, and I rip his barking little head off. Arr, arr, and then the other one, he comes at me like he's a revenge engineer or something, and that little shit actually gets a nip into my leg before I rip his stomach apart. I go lay in the sun. I wait. I figure there might be some consequences. A little mate, their master arrives home. Little kid, maybe 10. 11 years old, he doesn't know what to do, his parents must still be at work, he just stands there and screams and screams and screams and screams and screams and screams. Finally a neighbour arrives and takes him inside, but not, but not before, this guy blocks up a hole in the fence with the wheelbarrow. As if now I'm gonna kill the kid. 
at six. A man arrives at the gate. He looks furious. I, I try to make him understand, but he just yells and points his finger. If I didn't feel so rotten, I wouldn't put up with this. But I just lay there and let him yell at me. Finally, he puts a note on the gate. My master arrives home as usual at around seven. First he checks the note on the gate. Second he checks the demolished fence. And then he comes to me. He doesn't yell. He just stares at me and shakes his head. And then he goes next door. He doesn't come back for ages. And when he does, he looks terrible. But he comes to me and he hugs me. He hugs me for a really long time. And then I don't get fed all night. Today, he goes out in the morning and then he comes back. But, but now he's late for work. But he makes me a meal and he brings it out to me. And then he hugs me again. And then he goes off to work. I've been staring at that bowl on and off for five hours now. It reeks of poison. But I am obedient and good. I obey my master. It's the right thing to do. My master has been shamed and it's my fault. He'll be home in a few hours. And he must not be shamed further. So pardon me. While I eat. Huh?